Hi, I'm Paul DiBartolomeo. Welcome to Training Minutes. In today's segment, we're going to discuss multi-point lifts. A multi-point lift distributes the load to two or more points along the object to be lifted. When done properly, we double our lifting capacity and we provide for a controlled and balanced lift. Prior to performing this multi-point lift, we want to do a th full 360 walk around of the dumpster, looking for any unknown hazards. We want to look inside the dumpster to check on the load to try to determine how heavy this lift is going to be. We also want to see if there are any objects in the dumpster that might shift or roll as we perform the lift, thus causing an unbalanced lift. On the opposite side of the dumpster, we want to stabilize with step cribbing to prevent any lateral movement and also to prevent that side of the dumpster from depressing, which could potentially further injure our patient. In this scenario, we see our victim is completely pinned under the mid-span of the dumpster. We opt to use a multi-point parallel lift. We could use a single point lift, but we'd have to move our lift stack in order to extricate the patient. And in the event that this dumpster was unevenly loaded, our lift could become unbalanced. We've positioned our bags on the extreme outside of the span, just in front of the dumpster's rollers. We've built up with cribbing and used the appropriate stacked bags. We want to build our lift right up to the underside of the rail of the dumpster. What we've done here is place the plywood pad on top of the top bag. Because the profile of the rail is rather thin, our surface area with just the bag is going to be somewhat limited. That could detract from our lift. By placing a pad on top of the bag, we distribute that surface area and get a much better lift. We then position our capture stack to the inside of the respective lift stacks. As the dumpster is lifted, we will stabilize the load with the wedges and we will capture it prior to extrication. In this scenario, we've opted to use the Y. The Y will provide for a controlled and balanced lift. We must ensure that when using the Y, we run the hoses to the corresponding bags in the stack. In other words, this Y here has the black hoses running to both the bottom bags. This Y here has the green hoses running to the top bags. We must be careful not to confuse these hoses as if to run this hose to a bottom bag, this black hose to a top bag. That will result in an unbalanced lift. By building up with our crib stack to the underside of the dumpster frame rail, we avoid losing any capacity out of the bag. This is going to be an extremely heavy load, so we want to maximize the bag's lifting capacity. By placing the plywood on top of the bag, we're going to distribute the lifting force evenly. We're going to catch the dumpster rail, and we should get reaction as soon as we begin to inflate the bags. Up on black, slow. As we can see, as soon as the bags begin to inflate, there's a reaction. The dumpster is being lifted because our lifting force is being distributed along the plywood pad. As we lift, the firefighters are stabilizing the load with the wedges. Hold on black, up on blue slow. Once again, we use stacked bags. We alternate the lifting operation between the top and the bottom bag. Stop on blue, Joe Crip. Now that we've achieved the required height to perform our extrication, we want to capture the load before we commit any rescue personnel under the dumpster. Capture the load, lower on blue. As we lower the airbags, our capture stacks are going to catch the load. Good hold. It's important to keep the bags in contact with the load slightly. They'll provide added stability, and in the event that we do have to raise the load further, they're already in place to do so. We now begin our extrication. Remember, if this were a live victim, we'd want to take proper C-spine immobilization, board and collar this patient, and allow the EMTs to perform life-saving skills. I'm Paul DiBartolomeo. Thank you for watching Training Minutes.